let's play a little game called disrespect an entire community and then demand the most utmost respect in return. This entire conversation will be different if you didn't put real woman just because you know what you're doing. Dog whistle terms like real woman or biological woman are both used to classify trans as below, as inferior, which is just not respect. This is why the entire trans community has been challenging you to ask yourself why you don't like the term cis. I, just to make it clear, if someone said don't call me cis, I would not call them cis. The only right reason that I would use the word cis in general is if I'm scientifically differentiated between trans people and cis people. It's the definition. It's the word. It's just the word. I can't even imagine what your mindset would be when people started coining the term homosexual. Don't call me straight. I'm not straight. I'm what? What's the word you want to use? What is it? Probably. I know what it is. It's the word normal and it's incorrect. Challenge. I challenge you to ask yourself why. I wouldn't do it out of respect, but I challenge you to ask yourself why. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. We're, it, then refer to me as a woman. I'm living and breathing. Say what? I know what it is. It's the word normal. You are correct, sir. Yes! Now, why would that person we just heard from, who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman, why would that person say, and I quote, I know the word you want to use, it's normal, and that's incorrect. Is it though? Anyway, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So I have a very quick and very crazy weekend clown world update for you guys today. And as usual, we have, well, very little time to waste. So let's get into it. Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. Now, when I first saw this, I thought to myself, oh, look, Al Weezy finally made the big screen. But I was wrong. Anyway, this is Barbara Butch. Now, Barbara Butch is a self-described fat Jewish queer lesbian. That's what she calls herself. Now, Barbara Butch recently played the role of Jesus in the Paris Olympics opening ceremony rendition of The Last Supper. Now, I can't show you guys the clip because they're going hard and heavy on copyrights, and I don't want to get a copyright strike over it. But a lot of people are very upset about this whole opening ceremony, saying it's mocking Christianity. However, my question is, isn't the Olympics about sports and athleticism? How does this make any sense? Go on a die, you fat <laughs> Now, here is a very quick clip of Barbara Butch that she put up on her own Instagram after the opening ceremony, which she called the New Gay Testament. Now, I don't know why they're making this weird noise, but whatever. Roll it. Holy cow. All right, let's keep it moving with this fellow who just a couple of weeks ago staunchly supported Joe Biden and now, like the rest of the Democrat Party, is getting behind Vice President Carmelo Harris. Now, this clip is kind of long. It's almost three minutes long, and I wasn't going to include it in today's video, but this guy's descriptive vocabulary is priceless. I just had to share it with you guys. Roll it. This one's for MAGA. This one's for Trump supporters. This one is for all of the inbred howler monkey Gomer Maggot Chuds. Uh, I'm recording this at 10.30 p.m. West Coast time on Thursday. As we are all aware, this past Sunday, uh, Joe Biden dropped out of the presidential race and endorsed Kamala Harris to be the Democratic nominee for president in the 2024 election. Uh, by Monday afternoon, Kamala had secured enough delegates uh, to be the Democratic nominee for president this year. Uh, well, two things. One, first of all, it's, it's been really touching for us uh, to see that you guys are so concerned about democracy uh, that you keep coming into our comments and saying that, you, you know, the, the Democratic Party robbed us of our primary votes because we voted for Joe Biden, not for Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was on the ticket. Uh, during that primary process, first of all. Second of all, we're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. Uh, second, yesterday, uh, Fat Nixon, Pervert Hoover, Comb Over Caligula, Mango Mussolini, Little Donny Two Scoops uh, took time out from his rigorous diaper schedule 
uh, to challenge Kamala Harris to multiple debates. Uh, Donald Trump said, I want debates. I want there to be multiple debates. I'm ready to debate her anywhere, anytime. Uh, this morning, a reporter asked Vice President Kamala Harris about Donald Trump's challenge to debate her. And she's like, yeah, I'm not afraid of that guy. The prosecutor is never afraid to debate the convicted felon. And she took him up on his challenge. Well, three or four hours ago, Donald Trump's campaign put out a statement uh, saying that they're, they're not agreeing to any debates against Kamala Harris. Your boy, Fat Nixon, is scared of Kamala Harris. He is absolutely f***ing terrified of her, as is his entire campaign. They knew the chances of Joe Biden dropping out were way better than 50%. And, and this fart-huffing brain trust didn't even have a plan B in place. They had no plan B in place. And so Donald Trump and the Republican Party and Trump supporters, without having a coordinated plan B, reverted to what you guys always revert to, racism and misogyny. You are by far the dumbest, most pathetic piece of maggot-eating shit that has ever slid from a human being's hairy ass. Once again, I do apologize that that clip was so long. But the way that fella described Donald Trump and his supporters, like I said, it was priceless. When I talk about Joe Biden or Carmelo Harris supporters, I just say they're severely misinformed. Anyway, next up. So here we have this young fella I showed a few videos back that literally started crying when Joe Biden dropped out of the race. Roll it. I've done my research and I know he's not going to win in 2024. <laughs> He's a racist. And, uh, <laughs> might I add, grab her by the p <laughs> Sounds pretty misogynistic to me. <laughs> Gen X, checkmate, I'd like to say. <laughs> you hold nothing over me. Nothing. You're all so weak and pathetic, Gen X, millennials, baby boomers even. <laughs> I've done my research. Tons of research on Trump, actually. I knew about him before he was even big in 2013, right before he entered the election, might I add. <laughs> he was a nobody to you guys, and now you worship him like a god. <laughs> you guys are so, so crybabies. What did you say? What the f did you just say? You guys are so, so crybabies. Meanwhile... Ah! Joe Biden, please! <laughs> Gen Z, we need to band together! <laughs> please! It was for Gen Z's first president! <laughs> What is wrong with you? All right, next up we have this individual who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman and calls himself a trans man or trans lesbian, but that's not relevant to this clip. So we saw this person in a video several months ago complaining about being discriminated against because the gynecologist wouldn't let him come in for an appointment. Bro, it. Well, hey, fellow TikTokers, how are you today? Whoa, you have a deep voice. Coming back to you with another clapback. This one comes from French Church. French Church goes on to say, No disrespect. Were you the creator who was unhappy a gynecologist wouldn't see you for maintenance? <clears throat> My quarrel with that is that guides don't treat and aren't trained for artificial vaginas. Okay, well, number one, yes, I was that creator. Yes, I did feel discriminated against. And no, my vagina is not artificial. Number one, it is a neo-vagina. There's nothing artificial about it. It's there, it's between my legs and functions. Okay, now, so it's, it's not fake, it works. Now, number two, um, 
Gynecologists do, in fact, treat trans patients for many different reasons. Um, the number one reason a gynecologist treats trans patients is for HRT. Yep. The second reason they do it is a lot of gynecologists out there actually perform vaginoplasties on trans patients. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another reason is that a lot of gynecologists who happen to be surgeons can also do revisions on patients. In my particular case, I needed a gynecologist for an annual post-op exam. Period. Now, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about a neo-vagina versus a natal vagina. All right, here's the differences. Number one, I do not have a cervix, but neither does somebody who's had a full hysterectomy. So in that aspect, my vagina looks the same at the end. It's not real different. Oh, that was the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. So this young lady has a message for all of you white women out there. Now listen very carefully to what she says you all say in the safety of your own home behind closed doors. It can't be true, can it? Roll it. Hey, white women. Y'all husbands flirt with us at work, okay? Um, we might be the hard GR at home with you, but at work... If I get my nails done, they notice. If I get my um, hair done, they notice. If I wear a different perfume, they notice. So I'm all about the, the sisterhood. And I just thought you should know that. And uh, I don't never buy lunch. What did you say? We might be the hard GR at home with you. I'm not racist. Every Martin Luther King Day, I order a cup of dark roast. Now, I think I got mixed up on that last clip. I think she was insinuating that it's the husbands of the white women that call them the hard GR at home, as she put it, which is certainly not true. Anyway, real quick, before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And while I'm doing that, you got to let this loop on the screen. Now, we've seen this. Slightly rotund individual here on the channel a few times recently, and I said it before, I will say it again. Reminds me of Rerun from back in the day on the TV show What's Happening. Great dance moves, by the way. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by our great friend Coda320. Coda320, once again, and as always, sir, thank you so much for your kindness, generosity, and support. It is always greatly appreciated. And Coda 320 is just one of those people that keeps my faith in humanity alive. So once again, today's video sponsor is our great friend Coda 320. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below. And I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. All right, I think we've seen enough of this. Get this off the screen, please. Oof. So this is really who Donald Trump chose as his running mate? Got the beat. I'm a never Trump guy. I'm a never Trump guy. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. I'm a never Trump guy. I'm a never Trump guy. I'm a never Trump guy. Never I'm a I'm 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 a never Trump guy. Never I'm a I'm 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 a never Trump guy. Never I'm a I'm 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 a never Trump guy. Never I'm a I'm 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 a never Trump guy. Never liked him. Oh my god, look at that whale. All right, next up, we have a very interesting, albeit controversial, statement from this African fella. Roll it. And this whole thing of LGBTQ becoming a game player, a critical role player in the international politics, it's a decoy. It's a decoy because it's not honest. It's not truthful. It's not productive. In fact, since America wants to become the gay capital of the world, I have good news for America. Let them tomorrow morning make a declaration to open up their borders for all the gay people in the world who want to leave. They can move over to America. And all the people who want to build homes and families can come to Africa. I guarantee you, in less than 30 years, if not 50, America will be a ghost town full of dead bodies, coffins, and graves. Because that's the dead end of life. Oh my goodness! That's the most badass thing I've ever heard! 
All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up with this throwback clip from a year or two ago of Vice President Carmelo Harris at the Demilitarized Zone in South Korea. And listen to what she says. If this is what we have to look forward to from a Harris presidency, we could be in big trouble. Anyway, things are clearly getting very crazy out there, guys. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. So the United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. And it is an alliance that is strong and enduring. And today, there were several demonstrations of just that point. What the hell did you just say? So the United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. And it is an alliance that is strong and enduring. That's the dumbest thing you could have said. What are you, an idiot? And you ain't black.